with U.S. Senator John Hickenlooper, a Democrat from Colorado. Today's webcast is presented by biz to credit supported by CPA.com. The program will begin promptly at 1 p.m. Eastern in approximately two minutes. A recording of today's webcast will be made available in the biz to credit Webcast Center following the conclusion of the session. Please settle in and we will get started in about two minutes. And once again, if you're just joining us, we are about to begin this online forum, Small Business, Inflation, and the Economy in 2023, a discussion with Senator John Hickenlooper of Colorado. We will begin in about one minute. And once again, welcome to this online forum, Small Business, Inflation, and the Economy in 2023, a discussion with U.S. Senator John Hickenlooper, a Democrat from Colorado. Before we begin, please note that this webcast and all answers and comments provided by the participants are meant solely for informational purposes and are not to be considered substitutes for legal or tax advice. Business loans, loans under the Paycheck Protection Program, and other federal lending programs are not guaranteed and are issued at the sole discretion of the lender in conjunction with SBA or other government gui agency guidelines as applicable. The views expressed herein do not necessarily reflect the views of biz to credit its affiliates, or partner companies featured in this webcast. If you're joining us on the GoToWebinar system, you will see on your right-hand panel a uh, set of controls that allow you to ask questions. We encourage audience participation during today's session, and we look forward to interacting over the course of the next 45 minutes. Uh, here is a quick summary of our agenda for today's session. We will hear from Senator Hickenlooper on his most recent uh, thoughts and views around small business and finance in particular. The Senator will take audience Q&A, and then Ramit will lead Biz to Credit's uh, findings from the new Small Business Inflation Study. And with that, we will now welcome our host for this afternoon's webcast, Ramit Arora, president and co-founder of Biz to Credit. Uh, he will introduce our guest, the senator, uh, for today's online forum. Ramit, thank you so much for being with us this afternoon. Thank you, Charles, and uh, thank you to our partners at uh, CPA.com for helping us bring you this timely and important webcast. Uh, we have worked very closely with the AICPA and its business subsidiary, CPA.com, to support businesses seeking financial relief during this difficult time. And we appreciate their support in bringing you webcasts such as this one. I also wanted to acknowledge the support of uh, Paychex, Hartford Insurance, Chubb Insurance, Popular Bank, HSBC, and First Republic Bank, some of whom are joining us in the audience today as special guests. Now, uh, I'm very honored to introduce uh, our guest speaker, uh, United States Senator John Hickenlooper, 
of Colorado. Senator Hickenlooper serves uh, on the Senate Committee on Small Business and Entrepreneurship, among other Senate committees, including Commerce, Science, and Transportation. Serving his first term as a Senator for the people of Colorado, uh, Senator Hickenlooper has focused his attention on finding solutions for business owners to access capital and thrive in the modern American economy. Unlike a lot of other politicians, uh, Senator Hickenlooper is a small business owner himself. Is uh, a former small business owner himself. He he understands the pains uh, and the problems associated uh, and the challenges associated with running a small business. And he has strongly advocated for broadening the access uh, of the small administration, small business administration loan program. Uh, it goes without saying that Senator has made small businesses one of his most important priorities in the Congress and the Senate. In our uh, online forum today, we will first hear from the senator about the work he's doing on topics that matter to business owners. And we'll then have an opportunity for him to respond to questions uh, we have received from the audience. <coughs> senator, thank you uh, very much for being with us this afternoon. Uh, uh, thank you, Raman. Am I unmuted or mu muted? Am I unmuted? You are unmuted, Senator. but I cannot see your video. You don't have video. All right, hold on. You probably, some people might not want the video when I'm speaking. <laughs> I, um, thank you for the nice introduction, Ramit, and I appreciate uh, you know you guys bringing this together um, and making sure that we have a, a chance to discuss a lot of what I think is some of the most consequential and important uh some of the most consequential and important challenges facing small businesses today um and you know better and everyone on this call i think has a fairly good idea of how large the the universe is i mean we're talking 31 million small businesses six trillion dollars a year um you know in colorado when you look at the total number of businesses 99 percent of those businesses are small businesses um, and nationwide, over half of our total employment uh, is employed in small businesses. Uh, the pandemic obviously was brutal to many, many small businesses. Uh, and coming back, fighting our way back from the small from the the pandemic, we've faced lingering problems, significant challenges uh, with supply chains. And, and the consequence, I think, largely as a result of the disruption of the supply chains, we've seen remarkable inflation. Uh, and I think there's no doubt that this has been hurting small businesses and, and not just by uh, decreasing consumer demand for products and services, but also by increasing interest rates. So that if you're trying to expand or uh, you're in a cyclic, uh, your business is cyclic in nature, uh, that that lending that, that tied you through the slow periods uh, has become suddenly more expensive. Um, I think that it's not all bad news. We've seen record numbers of starts of small businesses. Uh, we have 5.4 million new businesses started in 2021. Uh, and I think that we're seeing uh, similar large numbers. Uh, 2022, we at least have applications for a similar number of startups in 2022 as well. Um, I, I have spent a lot of time in the Senate and, and a lot of the Senate has focused on the issues around inflation and what can we do to restrain it because it is uh, a hindrance. Uh, we make sure that we've uh, been able to focus on SBA 504 loans for, for green energy investments, for trying to figure out ways we can um, uh, get the purchasing going and get the economy going, but but not create inflation. Um, the CHIPS Act, uh, the CHIPS Plus Science Act, uh, and the Ocean Sh Shipping Reform Act really worked at trying to get at that supply chain issue. Um, these were investments to lower energy costs and, and uh, lower domestic supply uh, chain costs, um, and as much as possible, spur domestic manufacturing itself. Uh, it's a big part of what our office has been working on. Um, we have, 
as a freshman senator. Some, you know, I was, for those of you who don't know, I was a mayor and a governor. I was a mayor of Denver for eight years and then a governor of Colorado for eight years. Uh, and the, the legislative process is uh, new and sometimes frustrating for someone who hasn't been involved in it in a deep way. But I find it exhilarating. And I think, you know, we've got, we've got a, we passed one third of all the bills we introduced. Um, uh, we were able to set up small business retirement plans uh, for employees in smaller businesses. Uh, we have uh, really focused on uh, reducing regulatory complexity, um, which is a big part of why um, employers don't offer a retirement plan. Um, and our bills worked on both of those barriers. Uh, we also want to make sure that we are the loudest voice, uh, a strongest voice for entrepreneurs and innovators. Innovation really happens in small business. That large corporations, more often than not, uh, they grow their profits through very modest innovation mm -hmm. and, and consolidation. You know, in many cases, uh, gobbling up their their smaller competitors. Um, and I think. Uh, I think the pandemic showed us that we need to put more effort and more intention behind how we support small businesses uh, as a result of the pandemic. Uh, you know, big banks don't always have small businesses in mind. We saw that during the, the pandemic. Um, I know this firsthand when I was first starting, you know, I started the first brew pub in Colorado back in 1988 and we couldn't get a loan from a big bank. So I'm fully aware of what the challenges and limitations are uh, with a system that is too too focused on large banks. Um, we're also been looking at how do we get more fintech firms, uh, creating uh, new and better products, offering more choice, um, uh, uh, reduced costs for small businesses. Uh, Tim Scott and I offered an, ex uh, we call it the expanding access uh, to affordable credit. Expanding access to the affordable for affordable credit to Small Business Act. Uh, don't don't ask me why we come up with these names. Uh, anyway, it modernizes the SBA uh, so that fintechs can uh, have greater access to the SBA lending programs and can utilize a lot of the advantages that they're able to provide. Um, we've also worked on immigration reform. We know that uh, small business in healthcare and agriculture, uh, hospitality need more workers. Um, uh, that's a big part of this as well, to really make sure that we're trying to figure out how can we deliver uh, the businesses and the and the, the, the support we need. Um, anyway, I think that's probably gone longer than my eight minutes. Um, <laughs> anyway, let's go. Let's ask. Let's answer some more questions or uh, some Thank questions. <laughs> Thank you, Senator, for all the work you're doing for the American small businesses and. Uh, we really appreciate all the efforts that you put in uh, in also bringing in the bill with Senator Tim Scott. Uh, we have received hundreds of questions for today's forum, and I'd like to uh, ask you to respond to some of the questions uh, posed by thousands of small business owners listening right now. So the first question is from uh, Rachel in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Uh, what new and innovative steps will you advocate Congress takes from your seat on the Senate Small Business Committee? Uh, thank you, Rachel. Um, and you know, I originally grew up outside Philadelphia uh, and uh, know the Tri-City area around Ell Allentown really well. Uh, actually, we almost did a brew pub there 20 years ago. <laughs> um, anyway, thanks for that question. Uh, we're trying to figure out, I mentioned earlier that we want to support more, getting more fintechs uh, into the SBA. Uh, but there's a lot that can be done to improve the SBA. I mean, the SBA lending generally, if you look at the 7A program, is a good example, but it's largely the decisions on who gets loans and, uh, you know, how large they are, uh, what the cost structure looks like, uh, mostly made by white males. It's been a white male dominated industry for a long time. And so we've been looking at uh, how to uh, diversify that, that structure uh, and hopefully expand the, the pool of people who qualify for loans and uh, fill in gaps in, in access. Uh, you know, access to capital, and it was one of my constant challenges was when I was in a, you know, we had about a dozen restaurants, maybe 26, $28 million a year uh, when I got crazy and ran for mayor. 
Uh, and it was just a constant challenge. Um, if you look at, at, at venture capital, venture capital is, is often consolidated in urban areas. Um, you know, they say that 79% of, of venture capital is, is expended in, in three states, uh, when you think about it. And that's, you know, they're all along the, the, the coasts and you're not, you know, you're not providing real equity and you're not taking advantage of the, of the diversity of this, that this country has. Uh, so that's, we've worked on bills to do that, to, to again, uh, reevaluate who qualifies to, to uh, uh, be part of giving a loan, and then how do we make sure that uh, as we expand that, we make good loans and take advantage of the, of the value that FinTech has. FinTech, great thing about FinTechs is oftentimes they are doing the financing of small businesses, uh, are doing the, the, you know, the uh, uh, profit statements and the, the financial reporting for small businesses. So they have a much better idea in many cases of what the, what the resilience and, and capacity is for a small business when they're trying to find a loan. Um, so hopefully we're uh, going to see more and more uh, small business lending um, in some of those who traditionally struggle to get access to lending. Thank you. Uh, next question is from Kankar in Lowell, uh, Massachusetts. Uh, due to inflation, my business is down 25% compared to a year ago. What kind of support we can expect from the federal government to combat this high inflation that is hurting so many small businesses? Thank you, thank you, Kankar. And and that's you know that's the question of the hour. Um, uh, let me just first say that, and I understand the Fed has got a job to do, and they're addressing this by you know making these very aggressive in increases in the interest rates. I'm not an economist, I'm a small business guy, but I'm not convinced that that is the only tool that we should be using to control inflation. Inflation, definitely, we have to, we have to fight it. We cannot let it get ahead of us, but it does appear that it's largely the result of supply chain interruptions. And, and when I, I talk about when you shut down the global economy for the first time in history, when we've just finished a, a 30 or 40 year evolution to just in time manufacturing, uh, and, and you know, most businesses are, are are not keeping anything close to the inventory that they used to have. When you shut down the global economy, it's really hard to start it back up. And those supply chains, uh, they do save money. Some people argue 12 or 14 percent of a, of a profit and loss statement uh, was added by becoming leaner and not carrying all that inventory with all the, those costs. Uh, but things like oil, you know, sometimes it's just the, the, when you interrupt that supply chain uh, and no one's using oil, uh, the price goes way down, people lock in their wells. Then you come back, the economy gets back into gear and the, the producing countries that, that deliver crude oil to the markets recognize that their sales may be down three or four percent, but their price is up 40 percent or 80 percent or 120 percent. And you can bet they're going to be pretty slow about turning on the spigots. Uh, and I think that's those kinds of interruptions are, are what have really been uh, driving uh, the inflation. And I, you know, again, just raising interest rates, as I already mentioned, has, has the potential to do real harm to small businesses, both by uh, dampening uh, consumer demand, uh, but at the same time, you know, if, you're, if you've got any kind of loans for your small business, making that them much more expensive. Well, uh, we're obviously the, we passed the USICA, uh, the Competes Act, to fix the semiconductor supply chain. That was a big part of what the problems were with inflation in the automobile industry. Uh, we passed the bipartisan infrastructure bill to not just rebuild supply chains, um, but to really begin to invest into uh, wind and solar and the new energy economies. Um, I think we, we've worked really hard. We didn't get very far, but we didn't get or we didn't get success in immigration to address some of these labor shortages. Uh, and I think going forward, we really have to look at the tariff system that, that President Trump created, because in many cases, those have been a uh, an impediment to expansion and growth in small businesses. Um, uh, so the, last, oh, well, the other thing I don't want to forget is that 
we should be constant looking at you know the size and the monopolistic tendencies of many of the large businesses meatpacking is a classic case where you're down to four or five gigantic meat packers and again they don't have a huge incentive to be you know uh cutting costs at all corners they seem pretty happy with the stat status quo and when they raise prices they somehow magically all seem to raise them together uh i think the federal government should be looking into that making sure that that what appears to be monopolistic uh we have to make sure that it's not true true senator i agree with you because we have seen a lot of our small business owners uh, face problems with high freight costs and also with rising gas prices so i think uh, since both of those have come down significantly i think that is helping a lot of small business owners Absolutely. thank you thank you again uh, next question is uh, fuel costs are a significant burden uh, to small businesses transportation budget what are we doing to be energy independent this is from robin in elburn illinois well thank you robin uh, and again i touched on this a little bit but i relish the opportunity to reemphasize that you know every time we go through one of these uh, uh, crude oil cycles where the price comes way down and then goes way up and this kind of whiplash effect that is very hard on small businesses very hard on working families it demonstrates our dependence on foreign oil and we have the technology we're making the innovations every day to begin this transition to uh, uh, electric vehicles to wind and solar and geothermal and hydro hydropower uh, you know clean energy in all of its forms and we sometimes lose sight of you know how important that is long term to protect our our workers and our, our small businesses from the whiplash of these wild gyrations in the in the price of traditional fossil fuel energy. Uh, part of the thing we do need to recognize, and I bring this up all the time, we're gonna have to rebuild our transmission system so that we can get renewable energy from places where it's generated to the places where it's consumed. Uh, we're gonna have to get more recharging stations once we get that tr the transmission in place. As we're going to go to all these electric vehicles, and I, you know, I talked to the CEO of Mercedes-Benz, oh, about a year ago, uh, nine months ago, and he was describing to a table of largely Republicans, they were complaining he was too green. He was saying that they wouldn't sell any new Mercedes in a country that, if a country had enough charging stations, they wouldn't sell a, a gas-guzzling Mercedes after 2030. And you know, California caught a lot of flack for saying they were going to get to that point by 2035. And when these my Republican friends at the at the table, you know, started pushing back and saying, "Why are you trying to be green? You're, it's not what your customers want." Uh, this CEO uh, from Mercedes looked and said, "Are you kidding? We've done 220 focus groups. We've done 60 national and regional polls. People, once they drive electric vehicles." They're not going to go back. They want electric vehicles, so we are responding. The automobile industry is responding to the demand of consumers, but now we've got to make sure that we have the infrastructure to allow that transition to happen. Uh, again, this is going to be very difficult. We saw with these huge fluctuations in gasoline prices that working people are are going to get caught in the in the vice of the transition from time to time, and we've got to do a better job of protecting them and getting them through these transitions uh, uh, as much as we possibly can. But make no mistake, I mean, uh, solar energy now is cheaper, even with existing coal-fired electric generation plants, uh, electric uh, uh, electricity created from solar is less expensive even when you're building new uh, solar uh, capacity. So we're going there uh, and we're gonna move pretty quickly. We just have to make sure we have the infrastructure. Thank you. Thank you, Senator, again, for all your efforts on promoting green energy. Uh, our next question is from Alan in Silver Spring, Maryland. Uh, what is your prognosis for the next 12 months for small businesses? Well, and I, and I, I said this before, uh, I'm a small business person myself, and you can't, you can't be in small business without a certain amount of optimism. Um, you know, we saw Five, I mentioned we had 5.4 million uh, starts, startups in, in 2021. Uh, I think in 2022, we have applications for about 5 million more, something like that. Uh, unemployment's close to a, 
uh, a 50 year low. Uh, I do think that we're going to have a lot of opportunities. And I, if we get, if we get, if the Fed, my opinion, <laughs> but if the Fed holds back and doesn't, doesn't keep, you know, jamming the interest rates, we could actually come out of this in, in, a, in a great position to grow quickly and steadily. And in so doing, really drive the global economy to begin expanding as well. Um, we are, whether we like it or not, we're all interconnected these days. Uh, and we've got to get our economy going so that the rest of the world can do as well. Uh, obviously, government's going to play our part. We, the infrastructure bill, uh, you know, a lot of broadband construction is going to go on there, bridges and roads. Uh, we're going to be making more chips in the U.S. through USICA, as I mentioned. Um, I think the broadband is going to be probably $65 billion. So there's a lot of, there's going to be a lot of, of building going on. And in that, in that economic growth that comes with that, I think there are going to be tremendous opportunities for small businesses in all kinds of industries. Thank you. Thank you, Senator, again uh, for your time and, uh, you know, for being with us. Uh, we really appreciate My pleasure, Raman. And good luck. Let us know. I mean, we really do believe in fintech as, as a, a part of this solution. So we will be... We will be pushing for small businesses, and within that, we include fintech. And thank you for supporting fintech. You know, <laughs> of course. Good to see yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. So, thank you once again uh, to the senator for joining this online forum and for responding to our uh, audience questions. The work that he and his Senate colleagues are doing on the small business issues is vital, and we look forward to our continued partnership between the government and the private industry going forward. Now, at this time, we'd like to encourage some more audience participation in today's event. You will see a poll appear on your screen, and we'd appreciate you sharing your response to the poll question so we can understand a bit more about your experience as a small business owner during the current moment. So the first question is, which of these common challenges is your biggest concern as a business owner right now? Is it high inflation and supply chain disruption, lower revenue due to pandemic, rising interest rates and financing costs, trouble hiring the right employees? Or you can just simply select if you're not a small business owner. And you should all be seeing this poll now on your screen in the GoToWebinar system. If you're joining us through one of our other streaming services, just sit tight for a few minutes while we gather these results from our live attendees. And momentarily, we'll be transitioning to the second poll. Uh, Ramit, we will pull that poll and then share both results. Uh, so let's introduce that just after a few more seconds. A few, few folks are just getting their votes in. Again. Okay. All right, we'll give this one 10 more seconds for folks to enter their answers, and then we'll transition to our second poll. And now you should be seeing the second poll appearing on the screen. <clears throat> so we'll be very interested to know how do you feel about your business finances right now. So please select an option from very positive to very worried and let us know your feedback. And once again, this poll will be open for another 60 seconds or so. We're just gathering in the results, and then we'll be happy to share the live polling data from both of our poll questions in, again, just a few moments. 
And Ramit, I know you are going to preview in a few minutes uh, the recent work that biz to credit and our data science team have done on measuring the impacts of inflation on small businesses. Uh, would you say a few words about that uh, as a preview before we uh, share these poll results? Sure. So we uh, have uh, basically used the proprietary data from biz to credits uh, inflation study uh, across about 140,000 small businesses. We have looked at their cash flow analytics uh, uh, you know, where what are the top spending items for the small business owners as a category, and where are they, and what is happening to their margins. And what we have been seeing is that, uh, you know, small businesses faced real inflationary press pressures in 2022. And uh, uh, we have, uh, you know, seen that uh, there's more uh, effort being put into bringing uh, best in class solutions to small businesses. Uh, for the coming years and seeing how we can help them solve these problems. And uh, I will also discuss uh, shortly the financing opportunities that business op business owners should consider in their planning. Uh, because one of the most important things is uh, to plan ahead and uh, you know build a rainy day reserve uh, as so many people are so concerned about how 2023 uh, would plan. Out. So now coming back to the quick poll, uh, we see that uh, you know the biggest uh, uh, concern for a business owner right now is lower revenue due to the pandemic or the economic impact of the pandemic. So uh, inflation is now number two. Uh, last time when we did the poll, uh, we had inflation as the number one concern for a lot of small business owners. But now I'm seeing that the revenue, lower revenue has become the biggest issue for small businesses. And the third uh, issue is the rising interest rate. Uh, moving on to the next question, uh, we see that uh, a lot of business owners don't feel so good about uh, their business finances right now. And uh, uh, you know, majority of them are either feeling not so good or very worried, uh, which is not a good sign. Uh, I think again, uh, there are a lot of government programs uh, uh, like SBS 7A and other programs that are available to small business owners, although the costs have gone up, uh, our advice again is to uh, create your rainy day reserve, create uh, leverage uh, or get access to financing that you can get right now so that you're able to uh, build reserves for going through uh, 2023. Uh, we at Best to Credit have introduced uh, a lot of working capital programs, our term loan program. Uh, we have also launched a program uh, for employee retention tax credit financing where uh, business owners who are waiting for their employee retention tax credit to come from IRS can also access a bridge loan uh, to uh, use it for their working capital needs or for their other business needs. And we are very excited about how we can keep helping small businesses during 2023 to go, go over this tough time. <clears throat> and now moving on, I would like to uh, announce the results of the small business uh, inflation impact study for 2023. Uh, can we move on to the next slide? So if, if you look at the data, you can clearly see that, uh, you know, from about 140,000 plus small businesses that we surveyed and uh, we looked at nearly 105 million cash inflow and outflow transactions uh, between January 2019 to October 2022. What we are seeing is that pre-COVID, uh, the expenses uh, were uh, pretty much in control compared to the revenue. Uh, but if you look at the post-vaccine recovery and inflationary period, uh, especially in uh, 2021 and 2022, we can see that uh, the margins were significantly eroded and, uh, you know, small businesses uh, uh, revenue was also impacted by about 12% uh, per transaction. Uh, so it goes along with uh, the poll that we just had where uh, lower revenue has become an important or one of the most important concerns for small businesses. What we're seeing is that uh, small businesses have to work harder, have to sell more to attain the same level of revenue. And 
the other problem that they're facing is that uh, the expenses have gone up significantly over the last year and a half. Uh, we are seeing that because of freight costs, supply chain issues, uh, labor costs, which is one of the most important issues right now for a lot of small businesses. They are not able to find labor or if they're able to find uh, employees, they are very expensive compared to uh, 2019. And uh, you know that is all leading to uh, having small businesses uh, uh, having lower margins uh, on their sale. And uh, I would say a lot of small businesses are that is uh, concerned uh, as to how to manage these things in 2023, where uh, we are seeing uh, that the demand is going down or the sales are going down, but then the expenses are still staying uh, steady. Uh, the drop in freight prices or gas prices is helping a little bit, but I would still say that 2023 is, uh, you know, uh, could be a little uh, tougher for small businesses uh, because of, uh, you know, uh, all these issues. And again, small business owners have to plan uh, this year very well. They have to uh, uh, manage uh, for the higher interest rates uh, uh, that the uh, the Federal Reserve has now raised the interest rates uh, over the last year pretty significantly. They have gone up above 4%. Uh, so we have to uh, manage, uh, as small business owners, we have to manage uh, for the fact that the loans or the financing is now going to cost more. And how do we plan and budget accordingly so that the business can still keep growing? Anyone who's taken variable rate loans, uh, a lot of the SBA 7 a loans are variable rate will now see that their interest rates have gone up. We have seen for a lot of customers that their interest rates have gone up to about 10, 10 and a half percent on their SBA loans. And even for people who are getting uh, new financing, uh, they are for the first time after 2008, I'm seeing that they're seeing uh, the interest rates above 10%. Uh, business owners should turn to their CPAs, their business advisors, as to plan their future, as to plan their uh, financing needs, and uh, figure out how they will still keep going their business in 2023. As the senator mentioned, uh, if the inflation is coming down, as we see it is coming down, and interest rates don't go up much higher, there's still hope that uh, 2023 will not be as bad uh, as has been predicted by a lot of analysts and economists. And I think. Uh, Small business owners need to be optimistic about uh, how they manage and plan their future well and, and you know, keep focusing on the business and trying to grow it as fast as possible. Again, what we have seen is that uh, small businesses have uh, faced low approval rates in financing. Uh, you know, it's taken them a lot of time it's very paper intensive. Uh, uh, a lot of banks are still uh, requiring a lot of paperwork to process their conventional loans or SBA loans. That is why someone like Bistu Credit is helping a lot of small business businesses get quick access to financing in a digital and transparent manner. We are also helping a lot of these small businesses uh, uh, get access to acquisition financing, term loans uh, going up to five years and as I earlier mentioned, we have introduced the interest-only program for helping customers who are waiting for their employee retention plan. Ramit, thank you very much for leading us through today's webcast. Uh, of course, for all those who are joining us in the audience, uh, there are resources available, and uh, we will be sharing a little bit more about those Ramit, any final remarks uh, that you would have for business owners in attendance today before we conclude the webcast? I would say that uh, business owners, there's a lot of doom and gloom and a lot of negative news coming out right now, but business owners have to stay optimistic. Uh, as I said earlier, have to focus on their business. Uh, you know, uh, in the next three to four months, we'll see an opportunity where the labor market would also sort of loosen up. They will have an opportunity to hire uh, better employees or more employees for the business. And as I said earlier, just plan out uh, the next 12 months uh, uh, and uh, you know, reserve your financing, get access to your financing 
based on your financials from 21 and 22 and uh, you know don't lose the opportunity to have uh, a loan in your or funds in your bank account uh, because you know that will serve you very well if let's say the recession is very bad or not a mild recession so then uh, business owners can still uh, manage to run their business and uh, keep growing it and we at best to credit are always here to help all the small businesses uh, who need any help on growing their business, uh, looking for financing uh, to grow their business and to even discuss what their options are. Fantastic, Ramit, thank you very much for being with us. And of course, thanks once again to Senator Hickenlooper for his participation in today's webcast. Now, as we conclude the uh, broadcast portion of this session, we want to encourage you, if you have a question uh, that may not have been addressed in today's webcast, you can certainly enter it now in the question section of GoToWebinar's control panel. You should see that on the right-hand side. Uh, and we want to make you aware of resources that are available to business owners that have been provided by biz to credit and our supporting partners of today's special webcast event. The AICPA and CPA.com have developed resources that are uh, open to CPA firms and their small business clients that will help improve your financial knowledge in this evolving high interest rate, high inflation environment. This includes the AICPA Town Hall series, uh, very much like this webcast series that we at Biz to Credit are putting on. Our partners at AICPA and CPA.com have been hosting great informative talks on the status of the economy and where to uh, where to go next. Their next town hall event will be uh, tomorrow, in fact, tomorrow afternoon. You can visit AICPA.org to learn more and to stay up to date with news on business finance, uh, potential government actions, and key topics related to your financial needs. So we do encourage you to visit AICPA.org and CPA.com to learn more about that content provided by our great partners over there. In the meantime, at biz to credit we are committed to providing financing to more small businesses and helping business owners secure the best funding options for each and every project or capital need that you may have. With technology that makes business financing easy to understand and easy to access, biz to credits financing includes fixed rate options that are not sensitive to rising interest rates at this time, uh, which business owners can qualify for within 24 hours of submitting an online application. Create your funding account by visiting biztocredit.com and submit an application in just four minutes and get connected to a funding specialist who can guide your business through your next financing decision. At this time, we have reached the conclusion of today's broadcast for our, our web, webinar with Senator John Hickenlooper. Uh, that was the online forum, Small Business, Inflation, and the Economy in 2023 a discussion with U.S. Senator John Hickenlooper. Today's webcast was presented by biz to credit supported by CPA.com. A recording of today's webcast will be made available in the biz to credit Webcast Center following the conclusion of the session and always available to stream on YouTube as well. In a few moments, the session will automatically disconnect. If you have a question or would like to reach out to a funding specialist, you can enter your details or your question in the GoToWebinar control panel, we will leave the stream running for a few more minutes uh, uh, until 1.45 p.m. Eastern in order for you to enter those questions now. At that time, your session will disconnect. Thanks all for joining us, and we look forward to hosting you once again on a future session in this series.